They have analyzed the proof. They found it wanting. The case for now is closed. But the invitation for better evidence remains open. The world is still waiting for a true energy miracle. And when it arrives, this community will be ready to validate it. Until then, the search for truth continues one frame, one comment, one collective analysis at a time. The digital gavel has fallen. The data is clear. But a verdict is not an ending. It is a checkpoint. The conversation, fueled by your analysis, now enters a new phase. We must ask the harder questions. Why does this story capture us so completely? Is it just about a car? Or is it about something deeper? Something we all yearn for? We are drawn to the archetype of the lone inventor. The figure in the garage, battling giants with nothing but genius. It is a powerful narrative. It speaks to our desire for individual agency in a complex world. Chikambutso embodies this perfectly. His story is not just technical, it is profoundly human. It is about potential versus protocol. Vision versus verification. The 3% who believe see a torchbearer. They see someone daring to imagine a world unshackled from oil, from wires, from monthly bills. Their faith is not in the current proof, but in the future possibility. The 87% who remain unconvinced are not cynics. They are guardians of a process. They understand that for a miracle to be real, it must be shareable. It must be repeatable on a Tuesday in a lab in Helsinki or a workshop in Houston. True liberation comes from a technology that can be built, tested, and trusted by all. The 10% in the middle are the most crucial. They represent the bridge. They hold the door open, waiting for the evidence that could change everything. Their skepticism is hopeful. It is an invitation, not a rejection. This divide reveals our collective relationship with progress itself. We live in an age of simulated wonders. Deepfakes, CGI, and flawless digital effects have blurred the lines of reality. Our innate skepticism is a necessary immune system. It is why you picked apart the audio and the camera angles. You were searching for the digital fingerprint, the tell. In doing so, you performed a vital service. You applied the pressure that separates spectacle from science. So, where does this leave Maxwell Chikambutso? The community's verdict is a roadmap, not a dead end. The path to credibility is now clearly lit. It requires a single, audacious act of transparency. It requires submitting the invention to the very scrutiny it has thus far avoided. The world is not asking him to fail. It is asking him to prove he has succeeded in a way that we can all understand. To share the miracle, not just the mystery. The energy crisis is real. The desire for a breakthrough is palpable. If this is it, the world will celebrate. But celebration must be preceded by proof. The final image is not of a car on a private road. It is of a hand, extended. An invitation to a third-party engineer. An invitation to a journalist to sit in the passenger seat for a thousand miles. An invitation to turn a private claim into a public fact. The community has rendered its verdict on the proof provided. Now, the next chapter waits to be written. Not by us, but by the inventor himself. The tools of analysis are ready. The global laboratory is open. We await the evidence. The internet holds its breath for miracles. A single name sparks fierce debate across forums and comment sections. Maxwell Chikambutso. He claims to have defied physics. His invention, a revolutionary electric vehicle, supposedly needs no plug, no fuel, no sun. It runs on radio frequency energy pulled from the air. Skeptics call it a fantasy, a hoax, a physical impossibility. Believers see a visionary, a genius persecuted for disrupting the status quo. Recently, he released what he calls definitive proof, a video demonstration of this RF-powered car in action. The footage spread like wildfire. And the community, you, were tasked with a mission. To watch, to pause, to scrutinize every pixel, to be the jury on a claim that could rewrite textbooks. Over 10,000 of you delivered your findings. This is the community's verdict. We begin not with the car, but with the man. Maxwell Chikambutso emerges from Zimbabwe's challenging, economic landscape. He speaks of divinely inspired inventions, 
of technologies that bypass conventional science. His portfolio includes a green power generator and an electric helicopter. Each announcement met with equal parts awe and accusation. The central critique is always the same. Where is the peer-reviewed data? Where are the independent tests? The laws of thermodynamics are not gentle with exceptions. Then came the car, a modified SUV, presented as a prototype. The claim is audacious. It harnesses ambient radio waves, converting them into usable electrical current. This would mean free, ubiquitous energy plucked from the silent symphony of broadcasting signals. The implications are staggering. Entire energy infrastructures would become obsolete. For many, the sheer scale of the promise is the first red flag. The recent proof video opens with Chikambutso explaining the technology. He speaks of receivers, converters, and a new form of electromagnetic utilization. The car sits quietly in a nondescript location. The key moment arrives. The vehicle is shown driving. There are no visible cables. No hidden fuel lines in plain sight. It moves under its own power, smoothly and quietly. To an untrained eye, it looks convincing. It looks like magic. But this community doesn't settle for magic. You settled for forensic analysis. The first wave of comments focused on the audio. Listen closely to the sound of the tires on the pavement, one viewer insisted. They isolated the frequency of the crunching gravel. This was compared to the known acoustics of electric motors under load. A slight, almost imperceptible whine was allegedly absent. This, for some, suggested the car was simply coasting, not actively being powered. Another faction dissected the camera angles. The video is a series of cuts, not a single continuous shot. Between the edit points, anything could be introduced or removed. A cable could be disconnected. A battery could be swapped. The most damning observation came from an automotive engineer in the crowd. They focused on the behavior of the suspension during acceleration. In a heavy electric vehicle, the transfer of torque causes a specific compression and rebound in the suspension components. The way the car body moved, they argued, was inconsistent with instant electric torque. It looked, instead, like the gentle roll of a vehicle pushed or rolling down an incline. Then the community examined the environment. The location seemed too controlled, too private. Why not a public road with independent observers in the car? Why no display of the instrumentation cluster to show power flow? The dashboard was conspicuously not shown in detail during the drive. Questions about the RF receiver itself spawned a technical deep dive. Radio frequency energy in ambient space is incredibly diffuse, measured in microwatts. To power a car requiring kilowatts of energy, you would need a receiver the size of a football field or a revolutionary new material with near-magic efficiency. No such material was shown or named. The receiver on the car appeared to be a small, unremarkable box. Physics, as currently understood, states this is impossible. Either Chikambutso has broken physics, or there is another explanation. The principle of Occam's razor was invoked by thousands. The simplest explanation is often the correct one. A hidden battery pack is a simple explanation. A fuel engine disguised with sound damping is a simple explanation. A staged demonstration is a simple explanation. Breaking fundamental laws of energy conservation is not a simple explanation. A compelling counterargument emerged from supporters. They asked, what if we are witnessing a true paradigm shift? History is littered with inventors mocked before being vindicated. The establishment always resists radical change. They pointed to the smooth drive as evidence of functionality. They questioned the motives of anonymous online skeptics. Could jealousy or industry protectionism be driving the criticism? This philosophical split defined the debate. It became a clash of worldviews. One side demanded evidence that adheres to the scientific method. The other appealed to the possibility of revolutionary leaps. The community then turned to Chikambutso's history. Past ventures were examined with a critical lens. Promises of other world-changing devices that never saw commercial independent verification. A pattern was identified by the majority. A pattern of spectacular announcements followed by quiet retreats from scrutiny. 
This historical context became a key piece of evidence for the jury. Trust, once eroded, is hard to rebuild. A poll was conducted among the 10,000 analysts. The question was direct. Based on the provided proof, do you believe the RF-powered car is genuine? The results were decisive. 87% voted no. They found the proof lacking, the physics insurmountable, and the demonstration unconvincing. 10% remained undecided, wanting more access and better data. A mere 3% found the proof completely convincing. The verdict, by overwhelming majority, was that the proof did not substantiate the claim. But this story is about more than a poll. It's about the power of collective scrutiny. One viewer might miss a suspension detail. 10,000 viewers will catch everything. They become a distributed sensor network for truth. This collective intelligence is the real breakthrough here. It demonstrates that in the age of information, claims of this magnitude cannot survive in dark corners. They are brought into the light and examined by a global jury. The conclusion is not necessarily that Chikambutso is a fraud. The conclusion is that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The evidence provided was ordinary and easily deconstructed. The community's verdict is a request. A request for transparency. Drive the car from Harare to Bulawayo with journalists in the vehicle. Allow an independent engineering firm to inspect the powertrain. Publish the schematics and operating principles for peer review. Until such steps are taken, the verdict will remain one of profound skepticism. The dream of free, ambient energy is a powerful one. It is a dream worth pursuing. But the pursuit must be grounded in reproducible reality, not just compelling narrative. Science advances through verification, not just through vision. The community has spoken.